I continue with my silly example of the pi and e numbers. This time I want to demonstrate the db lookup expression. The db lookup expression, as its name suggests, is designed to access the database and retrieve for us some data. There are countless reasons for a business rule to be interested in what is lying in the database. One example can be a business rule from the human resource line of business, where some decisions should be made regarding an employee. In that case, the input may be only the employee's ID number, and the business rules are expected to retrieve relevant information from the DB during runtime. Relevant information can be, for example, the rank and seniority of the employee in the company. On screen, we see the function that returns a number based on an input from the user. Usually, the end user does not interact with business rules in such a direct fashion. A more realistic scenario is one where the user accessing some business application and the application automatically figures out stuff based on some stored information about the user. So this time, I don't want the input parameter to be the desired number. I want the input to be the user ID, presuming it is automatically entered to the function by the business application without even the user being aware of this. For this example, I also assume an existence of a database table that holds the desired numbers of all users. I made such a table with some demo data. The name of the table I created is ZZDesiredNums. Let's take a look. I intend to keep the case expression I have created, and it will remain as the top expression. But besides the forking, I first need to select the desired number of the user, and only then continue with the case expression. This plan involves a sequential processing, which, if you remember, is a good reason to switch to the event mode. But we can also accomplish the task using the functional mode, by nesting expressions one into each other. Let me show you how. First, I will replace the input parameter. Right now, it is desired number from the previous example. I will remove it and create a new one instead for the person ID. If we already know that a person ID is a string of numeric characters, I can leave the default type of text and the length of 255 characters. But in such a case, where we want to compare a value to what exists in the database, it is a good practice to bind the data element to the relevant type in the data dictionary. The binding action grabs the definition from the dictionary and automatically enters it in this pop-up window. Let me show you how it is done. First, I will go to the data dictionary to get the definition. I am ready to do the binding. Next, I need to create a DB lookup expression. Since we removed the desired number data element, we need to fix the case expression so the forking will be based on the result of the DB lookup. We can accomplish both tasks at one go.
I will give it a technical name and some text. A DB lookup expression can work in one of three modes. Two of them have also more submodes to choose from. The basics of using the DB lookup expression are the same for all the modes, only the result is different. We use the existence check mode when we want to check if some data exists or not in the database. Notice that this mode may return only a boolean answer. We use the aggregation mode whenever we need an aggregation of the data we retrieve. This mode has several sub-modes we can work with. Take a look at the options. In this example, I will use the data retrieval mode, which is also the default mode. This mode has two sub-modes. All entries means we want to get back all the entries in the table that match our criteria. Single entry means we only interested in just one such entry. Pay attention to the fact that in this case we don't have control of exactly which entry will be selected out of all matching entries. Assuming the user ID is a key field in the database table, we can use the single entry option. To be able to retrieve the desired information, the DB lookup expression needs two things. The name of the table where the data lies and some criteria. I will first enter the name of the table where the desired numbers for each user are stored. Notice that BRF automatically shows me the free text of the selected table. This helps me verify I have correctly typed the name of the table. My criterion should be that the row to be selected must belong to the user that his ID entered to the function. See how BRF suggesting me fields directly from the table definition. I will select the person ID field. I will compare the person ID field to the data element we have created. Now for the result. We can use our previously defined data element of desired number, but we can also ask BRF to create for us a new data element based on the field or fields we want to get back. Let's try this cool feature. Great! BRF Plus automatically created a new data element for us and mapped the result into it. All there is left now is to activate the dblookup expression and return to the function. Oh yeah, we still need to activate the case expression. As before, it is a good practice to test the function upon completion. I will activate the function and enter into the simulation screen, but before that, I will pay a quick visit to the database table to grab a test case. I will choose the second row for no particular reason. We should get the pi number.
Very nice. So, what exactly happened here? This number is the result of the top expression, which is the case expression. which uses the result of the DB lookup expression as the base for the forking, which selects the desired number for the person corresponds to the ID in the person ID element. Which is the input parameter of the function object. Okay, so now you know what a DB lookup expression is and the power that it brings. But with great power comes great responsibility. The DB lookup should be used wisely and this is a super important warning. This is because of two reasons. First, due to authorization considerations, some users might be unable to access some important data. This might cause the DB lookup to yield a partial or a blank result, which might disrupt the outcome of the business rule. To be sure, consult with an authorization guy before using a DB lookup expression in your business rule. The second reason is the more crucial one. Accessing the DB in a frequent manner is very, very bad for performance. Even in the era of HANA, it is not recommended to compose inefficient rules. So, you should ask yourself the following questions. Is the rule going to be consumed in a mass process, like in a report? Or is it going to be consumed sporadically? If the answer to the first question is yes, then you might be better off without the DB lookup expression. In such a case, you can design your business rule to accept any important data as input parameters instead of the DB lookup. This, of course, delegates the DB accessing to the developer of the business application, but the developers have better tools for coping with performance issues, so you shouldn't feel guilty. Let's continue.